So now in this video, we're going to look at some topics we've been covering lately and we touched on the 555 timer in the last video and how internally it has a voltage divider similar to these where you can tap into one third of the power supply voltage or two thirds and get an outcome. So I have a variable voltage divider here. Last video we focused on the trim pot which is really easy to manually set the voltage with the light dependent resistor and a fixed resistor wired as a voltage divider we can make it so the voltage changes based on how much light passes on the light dependent resistor and so we'll take apart this circuit and build it up step by step to explain how it works in more detail so to begin with let's explain the jumpers so we have this gray jumper that goes to the negative rail powers off by the way and comes to pin number one here so that's the ground pin our zero volt reference point and we have a resistor there in the uh, same spot on this side uh, pin number eight that's our VCC our positive side of the power supply we go to the red rail we consider that five volts so within here we have three resistors basically we looked at this in the last video where we can tap into one-third or two-thirds voltage so pin number two here is the trigger pin and then pin number six here is the threshold pin so they both monitor a voltage the trigger pin jumps into action it triggers the 555 timer when it drops below one-third voltage of the power supply or gets about one-third voltage of the power supply and the discharge pin or the uh, threshold pin I mean it monitors for the two-thirds voltage and it jumps into action and sets the output low when we get up to two-thirds of the power supply voltage to that pin and then when the output or the the signal here which we're going to use a voltage divider to set gets to one-thirds voltage then the trigger jumps into action and sets the output high so we have the output extended here to not block everything it'll be easier to see us wire up our load now also we have this jumper here that goes to pin 4 this is the reset pin so basically when we put it to the positive rail it tells it not to do anything but if we give it below one thirds uh, voltage I think it is I think it was slightly different but if we give it a low signal then it will reset the 555 timer which holds the output low no matter what as long as you have a low signal to the reset pin so now we come to our load and I would like to make it so a blue LED lights up when the output is low so blue for low so we're gonna short put the short pin the short lead here to where the output is connected to this jumper and the long lead we're gonna put up one row that is the anode and so to finish the circuit we need a protective resistor I'm gonna use a one kilo ohm resistor more than the red LED will wire up because blue LEDs are just naturally brighter and so at least these ones are so we're going to use more resistance for the blue LED but uh, there you can see we got positive side to the anode and then when the output is low we'll have a uh, current path through there so now the red LED we're going to wire the other way so we're going to put the long lead the anode to where the jumper is that way it will conduct when the output is high in the short lead the cathode we're going to put one row down and uh, it went over one more but uh, there we go and then we're going to add a 220 ohm resistor so the output will be high it'll go to the long lead the anode of the LED short lead the cathode will come to this resistor which goes to ground we will have a current path there when the output is high so now, already, we can test the circuit. I'll turn the power on. I think both LEDs are they're fluttering. Either the output's not doing anything or they're fluttering on and off so fast you can't tell. But in any case, we're going to put this jumper where these two resistors come together. And then that will give a low signal to the pin number 6 and pin number 2. So we just triggered it. The output is high right now. And when I release this it's gonna flutter but uh, now I'll put it to the two-thirds voltage and now you can see that the blue LED is on 
So now we come to the light dependent resistor voltage divider. So I'm going to put the light dependent resistor onto the positive side and we should turn the power off while we're wiring up. And there's different ways to wire this depending on how you want it to react. But in this video we want a low resistance on the positive side when there's a brighter light on the LED so that we will have a higher voltage. There'll be less resistance on the positive side for a higher voltage. And then we will take a 10 kilo ohm resistor, 10,000 ohm resistor, and put that to the negative side. And so basically what that means when we have a really high resistance, it's really dark over here, there's less resistance over here, and the we'll get a low signal. And so let's test it out. So it's on right now. We have low resistance on the positive side, and the output is low right now. And then, so we have a high signal, I should say. So higher signal, a low output. Now when we turn the light away, the resistance of the light dependent resistor went up. And so we have now lower resistance down to about one third or so to uh, the negative side. We'll have about a little less than one third of the voltage. So the trigger got triggered and the output went high. And of course it's really easy to measure that with the multimeter. This is auto ranging. We can just set to voltage and there's only one spot other than high current for the red probe to go for this particular meter. And so all I have to do is try to hold this steadily with uh, one hand right there and so you can see we are above the uh, two-thirds of the uh, power supply voltage right there there we go now you can see the red LED and you're gonna see the voltage drop and when it gets around one-third there we go the red LED came on and then we get up to about there's some hysteresis so it's not one particular spot, you have to go over a range, a small range, to uh, get the output to change. But in any case, there you can see that uh, it is being controlled by the voltage, getting to pin 6 and to pin 2. So, in any case, hope you enjoyed that video. I also could have just flipped it back and forth with my hand like that. And uh, so, these circuits can be a lot of fun with just some slight modifications. You can do a lot to make different things react. So, so far we're just using LEDs. I'll try to come up with some other things you can observe going on with these circuits easily. But uh, for now, LEDs are working the best. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.